بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My brothers and sisters, in this world, Allah has created us all very differently in the sense that the mind, the face, the understanding, the capacity, the ability, the strength, and all these things differ from person to person. Although we are human, we are part of the same species. One of the tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for us to come onto the earth and navigate the life. While we are on earth, worshipping Allah Almighty and going through the challenges that we will face in our lives, one of the major challenges is dealing with different personalities. So from amongst us, there are those who are very temperamental. How are you going to deal with them? Or are you one of them? To deal with them is not easy, but that's part of your test. You cannot get excited and upset and as angry as they are to the degree that you create a war. Knowing that I'm on earth, this person has a different temperament. You have to not just walk on eggshells, but... It is depending on who the person is to you. You will have to adjust and they will have to adjust. You will have to talk about it, help them. But at the same time, it is part of your test. Similarly, some people are cool and calm and so relaxed that it becomes an irritation because they cannot get anything done. That's the temperament. Allah made them in order for you to adjust, for them to adjust for the two of you to come together in a way that perhaps will be beneficial to both. Your Jannah is how positively you dealt with it and that person's Jannah will be how they try to adjust to improve themselves so that primarily they do not miss what Allah has asked them to do. Upon the time that Allah asked them to do it, for example, the prayer. And at the same time, they then fulfill the rights of everyone else in a proper manner. From amongst us, there are those who are wealthy. From among the wealthy, there are some who are arrogant, some who are humble. All of that is part of your test and my test. Two things, where do you fit in if you do as a wealthy person? On this side or that side, there might even be a third side. Some people sometimes arrogant, sometimes not arrogant. That's part of the test. Or are you one of those who has to deal with such a person? You see, so if Allah has put you in the midst of people who are wealthy and arrogant or wealthy and humble, how do you adjust to that? And what do you do in a way that brings you closer to Allah? Some people are very poor. From among the poor, there are some who are arrogant, who feel that you are guilty of making them poor. And some feel that it's because of you, you haven't given me, that's why I remain poor. How are you going to deal with that mentality? It's Allah who created that mentality, but the person needs help and it's not easy to help. But you will have to adjust and you will have to make do depending on who they are to you and what interaction you would be having with them. From amongst us, there are those who perhaps are very, very physically fit and some who are weak. Do the physically fit start thinking that they can attack anyone, beat up anyone, threaten anyone, or sometimes they are humble. It's just that they happen to be that way. You will have to deal with those people because they are on earth with you at the same time. It's unfortunate or fortunate. It's part of your ticket to paradise to deal with them. From amongst us, there are those many who are going through mental challenges. You don't know their upbringing, sometimes the trauma they may have faced as they were children, sometimes what happened to them that might have resulted in who they are today, but how are you going to deal with it? It's a challenge. It's part of your ticket to paradise. Who are they to you? Number one, if they are someone close that you're going to have to deal with, then you are going to have to deal with it because that's part of your paradise. Don't become despondent. It's not the first person who has challenge and it's not going to be the last one, but it's your <laughs> test while you're on earth. Similarly, if you're a person who has mental stress, 
it doesn't mean you're a madman or a mad woman. No, we all go through it. Different phases, different levels. Stress, anxiety, these are human qualities at times. But how do you deal with it? Don't feel too much of self-pity. Don't begin to doubt the whole world that everyone is actually an evil and bad person. Rely on Allah and try your best to help yourself. Get some professional assistance. Perhaps go for counseling and don't be in denial. If you're struggling, no problem. It's not wrong to go and get help. It's not wrong. Perhaps you, that is what would actually benefit you. So it depends. And this is why we say Allah placed you on earth with totally different people for a reason. In your own family, there will be different types of mentalities, understanding. Some people might not understand what exactly you have understood. Some might disagree with you. Is that disagreement really worth it or not? Sometimes we fight over which phone is better to the degree that we don't talk to each other for another year. Was it worth it? Throw both phones away and get along with each other. It's a minor, stupid, silly thing. If it is something very big, very meaningful, which is barely the case, then perhaps you might want to be a little bit more firm in whatever you're saying, depending on who you are, what authority you have and so on. Otherwise, just be understanding of people. The different colors, everyone's favorite is another. This morning, someone sent me a whole batch of sajadas, different colors. And they say, which one would you like? We'd like to give you a gift. I saw so many colors. I said, you know what? If they're going to give it to me, I'm going to give it to someone else anyway. So what's the point? May Allah Almighty grant us ease. And I'm thinking what beautiful colors, but I might like, for example, a beige or earth color. Other people might like a different color. I'm not going to war with them. I will love the fact that you love a different color from mine because you know what? At least I can choose the one I like. Allahu Akbar. Look at the positive. So it's okay. Allah's created us differently. Some people, for example, they might have this understanding in them that they are the best and that's it. And no one is like them. You know what? It's a sickness. It's actually a disease. But you will have to deal with that temperament. You are on earth. It's okay. Some people will doubt you. There are some Muslims who are intolerant of other Muslims just because they belong to a different sect, perhaps. So intolerant that they treat them even worse than the Kuffar, for example. That's the, those are the colors we find on earth. Some are indoctrinated with some form of a doctrine that is really, really extreme. You will have to deal with it. You will have to try to help them again, depending on who you are to them and depending on what you have in, you know, to do with them. Whereas some people are so relaxed, some might have developed a habit of addiction this way, that way. They might be, uh, uh, you know, addicted to pornography or drugs or whatever else it may be. That is part of your test and their tests. If they happen to be close to you, a family member, a child, a parent, a sibling, you will have to deal with it. You cannot cancel them completely simply because of a bad habit or an addiction. Are you going to help them? If you are going to help them, Alhamdulillah, but to what degree? You will also need to be helped because sometimes the pressure of dealing with something within your own home that might be very difficult would require you to also get some counseling. Hence, we are talking about it today. It's okay. You are not the first person. You won't be the last. You, yours is not the only family that's going through struggles. For your information, I do not know of a single family on earth that doesn't have such struggles as I'm mentioning today. Not one. So come on. It's, you're normal. You're human. You came on earth to be tested. That's what we believe. So these are the tests. The tests are, today you are seated next to someone. The person is different from you completely. They might be a different race. They might be a different nationality. That's your test and it's their test. Do you think you are superior? If you do, you need help, right? Do you think that you are closer to Allah just because of your color? If that's the case, you need help and so on. Do you think you are closer to Allah because of your authority or your wealth or how good you look? Not at all. So how would we help such a person? We would have to talk about it in a beautiful, respectable manner to say, listen, we're on earth, we're all going to share this place because it doesn't belong to me or you, it belongs to Allah. Allah put me here, Allah put you here. You are here without having asked to come here. And guess what? All of us are also here without having asked to come here. Not a soul is on earth because they said, 
oh Allah, send me onto the earth. Come on. Not one. Are you, are you on earth because you asked to come here? No. So when you go, you're also going to go without your choice. You can't say, oh Allah, no, don't take me. Just take these guys next door. It can't happen. May Allah Almighty grant us ease. If that was the case, and if we had those type of du'as, everyone would be praying the other one dies. Allah says, that's in my hands. Some people, they are violent by nature. Sometimes you have to stay away from such people. Again, if they are close to you, you might need to help them and it might not be easy. And some people are so soft in nature that they keep everything in and that results in stress within them. It might result in impacting their health negatively because they're bottling everything. But that's their nature. Some people don't talk much. Some people don't interact much. It does not make them abnormal in most cases. It makes them just human beings of a different color, different temperament. Learn to adjust, learn to help them. Try to bring them the best of your ability. If someone really has gone into a shell, are you going to make them feel like they deserve being in there? Well, then you failed your test. Or are you going to make them feel that, you know what, I'm here to help you. Come, let's go out. Let's go for a coffee. Let's do the clean fun. Come with me. Alhamdulillah, you helped someone. But if you are going to laugh at people who might seem to be different from you, then guess what? Perhaps you might be the problem. May Allah Almighty help us pass our tests. So whether it's your child or your brother or your sibling, family member, relative, community member, anyone on earth, be careful because it's a test for you. Some people don't like to talk. Some people really, they speak very loud. Some people are abusive in the way they speak. Come on, it's part of the test. There are people like this on earth. Allah wants to make you strong by letting you go through every type of person there is on earth. Today, in our country, we know that we're going through economic challenges. When I was, in fact, let me not crack a joke about it, but I was going to. But nonetheless, we have something known as the zig. Right? And who knows the amount of pressure it's brought upon the lower class or the lower middle class is such that it's brought, you know, mental torture for some who've lost a lot of the RTGS that they had. For example, if you're in Zimbabwe, you will know what I'm speaking about. How are you going to navigate through this? Are you going to laugh at people just because you're okay? Or are you going to reach out and say, brother, if you're struggling, I'm here. I can't really afford much, but we are in it together. Yeah, are you going to do that? Are you going to decide, listen, let me take out a little bit more in terms of charity. I'll help one family. If all of us helped one other family, wallahi, what happened? You're passing your test. But if you're laughing at others that, you know what, at least we're okay. Look at all these guys. Then you have failed your test because Allah is going to take you away. And when he takes you away, you went. How many people you helped? would result in your entry into paradise, maybe, and you didn't help a soul, but you had everything. You left it behind for your heirs to fight over, to fight over. You see, the hadith says the best wealth that a person has is the one he earned with his own sweat. So therefore, if you inherited something, it's not the best of wealth. It's yours, yes, but it's, it's not the best because the best is what you had with your sweat. You realize its value. You know what it's all about. You've understood. The minute you just received without any effort, it's another test. What is the test? The test is, what are you going to do with it? How are you going to deal with it? And so on. All these are things you will find on earth in your short 70 years stint on this earth, if you're lucky. A lot of us have left. I'm saying us. A lot of people have left before 70. May Allah Almighty grant us paradise. So when you see people, go easy on them. You don't know their lives. You don't know what trauma, what stress they've been through. You don't know what difficulties they're facing within their circles, in their businesses, in their jobs, if they have one anyway, or in their families, within themselves. People don't have the capacity to go through things. Some people have such a big capacity that you can torture them for 10 years and they can still look at you and smile and say, Salam Alaikum, everything okay? Whereas there might be another person whom the first bit of torture they taste, flip the mind. Flip the mind because they don't have that capacity. Allah's created people with different capacities. From amongst us, some can memorize the Quran so quickly. Others, they struggle. They can't. The hadith says, if you can read the Quran beautifully, you get a beautiful reward. You have a very high status. But if you're struggling, you get a double reward. So look how Allah is dealing with it for you. To say, don't worry. We know you're struggling. You're a bit slow. 
No, don't worry with us. You get a double reward because you are making the effort. Subhanallah. Look at that. So look how Allah helps. It, and Allah says it's your intention. Some can achieve, some cannot achieve. Sometimes the poor used to complain at the time of the Prophet ﷺ regarding how the rich can give charities. The Prophet ﷺ says, after your salah, your farad, read subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, 33, 33, 34. You'll get a reward even bigger than all of that. Subhanallah. Look at how he says. He dealt with it. Make them feel that at least we can also do something. So what I am trying to say today is we are all different. And on earth, in your own circles, you will find very, very different people. Try to be contributing in their lives in a positive way. And if you are a person who is going through struggles, ask Allah's help. And help yourself and seek help sometimes professional help like i said you're going through mental challenges anxiety it doesn't make you a mad person when i was little we used to hear about psychologists psychiatrists and think hey that's for mad people no it's not it's not it's not not at all it may be professional help maybe a visit or two might help you subhanallah may allah almighty grant us ease similarly when you're living with people understand the brain the brain is one of the most important organs Allah has given you and everyone else. Watch what you allow to shape your mind. Who do you listen to? Who keeps telling you? They shape you. They either belittle you or they empower you. Whether it's religious scholars or friends or circles, what do they tell you? Because your likes, your dislikes, your hate, your love, your this, everything has to do with what was put into your brain. If you're a person who's understanding, open-minded in, in a good way, you might be religiously strict on yourself, but you understand on earth, not everyone's going to be on the straight and narrow that you think you are on. You might not even be on the straight and narrow, yet you think you are on it. Other people will try to convince you that they are right. No problem, they are on earth. Do I have a better argument or... Perhaps I know something. Let's talk. Let's deal with it in a proper manner. So remember the brain, what you allow in it is something that can actually make you struggle with mental stress or anxiety or depression or whatnot. Or it can liberate you. Go easy. You know, crack a joke about things sometimes. Because in all honesty, if you're going to take everything so seriously, you're going to literally struggle. And you won't, the few years on earth, you won't enjoy your ibadah. People are saying, but you know, I call out to Allah and Allah's not helping me. Allah told you not to worry and you worry. And some people have in their nature, worry about everything on earth. I'm worried about me. I'm worried about this. I'm worried about that table there. I'm worried about the weather. I check a cloud. I think there's going to be a, perhaps a flood because there's flood somewhere else. Uh, suddenly I hear a sound. I think there's going to be an earthquake. Come on. Go easy, it's okay. Let's cross the bridge when we get there by the will of Allah. Don't worry about anything. You're struggling today. The struggle is not going to continue. You're looking for a job. Don't start thinking now, I'm not going to afford food and this. Work hard. Try your best. Keep trying a year, two years, 10 years. It's okay. 15 years. Allah will look after you. Somehow Allah will always take care of you. Don't worry. That's a promise of Allah. I always say, if Allah provides for the ants that you can't see, and those whatever organisms, whatever that you can't see, Allah provides for everything. Do you think He's going to miss you and I who are saying, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah? He can't miss you. He won't. May Allah Almighty bless all of us. I hope that all of us can learn to respect each other in a beautiful way. We, we learn to adjust ourselves to become beautiful people. We need really to help each other. Talk nicely to people. You don't know what impact it has when you just offer someone respect. That's all. And the opposite is true when you swear them, insult them, belittle them, keep belittling someone. You know, sometimes we do it to our own kids where we tell them, you're stupid. Or we keep on telling them, you're useless. You can't achieve. Do you know that that's the brain I was talking about being filled with a belief that I can't do anything? And so you grow older believing you can't do anything. So you don't do anything. Not because you can't. Because you were always told you cannot. 
and therefore empowering words of appreciation. Well done, you can do it. You are the best or you are good or mashallah, give them. Those are empowering words. This is the brain I'm talking about. Learn to fill it, not just for your own circle, but even wherever you get an opportunity, give people a good word, empowering word. Wallahi, you will see the world change. You live a happy life. You come and you feel like being a part of society and community. We care for each other. That's the ummah. You're never going to be able to bring everyone on the same level because it was part of Allah's plan to have everyone different. But it's part of Allah's plan for us to do something positive about it and never do something negative about things. And don't ever be the source of the problem. May Allah Almighty help me reflect. And may Allah help me to improve myself. May Allah forgive me for my own shortcomings. And what I just said about myself, may Allah give it to all of us. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد